13 WMAZ morning starts now. Looking live down in Perry, much warmer this morning than we were yesterday morning. What does that mean for the day ahead and your weekend forecast? It's coming up. Plus, the 13 WMAZ Listening Lab made its final stop in Dublin this week. We share what issues people in the Emerald City are focused on as Election Day approaches. An auto shop in Houston County is accused of taking thousands of dollars from people and not completing their repairs. Hear what the Better Business Bureau is saying about this coming up. And a Wilkinson County High School is getting students prepared. Find out how they're doing so on this week's School of the Week coming up. Good Friday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over the fairgrounds in beautiful Houston County. The time is now 631 a.m. here on this October the 28th, the last Friday of October. I'm Wanya Reese. Oh, and I'm Caitlin Heck. Hard to believe November starts next week. Where's it, the year going? Exactly. And Alex, that means that it's almost time to put up the Christmas tree, right? That's, that's what I was just thinking. You <laughs> dusted it off, right? You're ready to go for Tuesday morning. See, we're actually not going to be on at 5 a.m. Wanya's going to be putting up his Christmas tree, so it's... <laughs> I'm kidding. We're actually we'll be on Wednesday at 5 p.m. The Christmas tree might be out. It probably won't be, but it might be. Here's a live look over uh, Houston County this morning. 55 in Macon and in Warner Robins, 60 in Gordon, 57 in Soperton, 55 in McRae, and 51 waking up in Taylor County. Like I said, we're running warmer compared to yesterday. Some 5 to 11 degrees warmer in a few spots like down in McRae here in Macon. 9 degrees warmer in Warner Robins and 5 degrees warmer there in Soperton. The radar picture, nothing to speak of out there and really quiet for the most part across the southeast. A few showers down along the first coast down at say near St. Augustine and Daytona this morning and more rain as you get back out towards Texas. This is our next weather system that's beginning to take shape and that will lift towards central Georgia here over the next few days. As we roll into the day though, look for temperatures to warm into the 70s, 75 or so later on this afternoon. We've got changes on the way for the weekend thanks to that weather system I just showed you, but then also your trick-or-treating forecast. Everything you need to know for Halloween is a few minutes away. Thank you, Alex. We'll check in with you soon. Approaching Election Day, U.S. Senate candidate Herschel Walker paid a visit to Dublin to talk to voters. He brought along Texas Senator Ted Cruz to the Unite Georgia rally yesterday. People came out to support their hometown hero, along with dozens who wore his UGA number 34. Walker took the stage after an introduction from Senator Cruz. He talked about a number of issues like student loans, inflation and abortion. Taylor Outlaw came to the rally from Danville with her son Weston. Here's what brought her out to Dublin. Rising cost of inflation, um, gas is insane, trying to go to work and make a living. Um, and also, um, I'm here to fight for the rights of these little ones. They're, they're our future. Also in Walker's speech is opposition to President Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness policy and desire to keep funding law enforcement. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock, who is running against Herschel Walker, will be in Dalton today. That rally is set to kick off at 1145 a.m. as he continues to campaign. Democratic candidate for governor Stacey Abrams is also making her final campaign stretch run across the state. Yesterday, she actually traveled to Milledgeville on her bus tour. Abrams says Governor Brian Kemp failed Georgians by not providing health care for all, not fixing the housing crisis and endangering people with his open carry law. She says as governor, she would expand Medicaid, raise teachers salaries and secure abortion rights. And if we expand Medicaid, we can cover those who haven't quite gotten the Medicare or those who need in-home health. And we can help our veterans who don't have access to the VA benefits they deserve. But you need a governor who believes in you, who cares about you, who will serve you. And Brian Kemp has had four years to prove who he is. And as Maya Angelou told us, if someone shows you who they are, believe them. Abrams also says as governor, she would put more financial aid in the pockets of students by 2023 and would raise teacher salaries by $1,100. Today, Abrams' opponent, Republican Governor Brian Kemp, continues his South Georgia bus tour in Jessup. He made a stop in Darien yesterday morning. He'll be in McDonough and Peachtree City Monday morning and will make stops in Noonan and Carrollton on Monday afternoon. He continues to run on his record in Georgia, which he says positioned the state economy much better than others. Well, we headed out to the Emerald City for our final listening lab at the Dublin Civitan Club Fair. We heard from so many of you about the issues that you want these candidates to pay attention to. Some of those issues include mental health, inflation, and Second Amendment rights. The Second Amendment rights gives me the chance for uh, protection for my family, you know, my home, my property. With everything going up, it's like the tax price increasing, land tax is high. Every, really everything going up, the house market, all that. Pointing them in the right direction. 
I think a lot of times our teams get, in they, get themselves in situations that they can't get out of because they don't know how to get out of them. Well, if you missed out on your chance to come in person, don't worry. Right now you can still fill out our survey online. Just go to 13WMAZ.com slash listening. Now tomorrow is the last weekend day that you can vote early, so check with your county voting office to see what locations are open tomorrow. Early voting wraps up at the end of next week. Meanwhile, Georgians continue showing up early to the polls in record numbers. The state's early vote count moved over 1,225,000 voters casting their ballot. And in Bibb County, more than 14,000 people have cast ballots already. Well, right now, three people are OK after a small plane crash in Crawford County. Sheriff Lewis Walker says it happened around 1015 yesterday morning at Rigdon Road off of Highway 128. Walker says the Cessna 172 plane was trying to land when it crashed. A private car took the pilot and two passengers to the hospital. This morning, a 56 year old man is in critical condition after a car crash with a tractor trailer. This happened on Pierce Avenue near Ingleside Avenue last night. The Bibb Sheriff's Office says just after 730, a tractor trailer driven by a 50 year old man was traveling north on north on Pierce when a Hyundai Sonata driven by the other man crossed the center line. The driver of the car went to the hospital. The tractor trailer driver was treated for minor injuries. The local Better Business Bureau says they've reported a Houston County auto shop accused of poor service. Several people came forward complaining that Houston Automotive and Transmission Center took their money and never completed the work. Complaints on the Better Business Bureau website say the owner, Logan Simmons, is asking for thousands of dollars up front, taking out parts like catalytic converters and keeping cars for months even after customers ask for them back. Jared Kemp says he recently found himself entangled with the business and says he quickly learned he should have read the reviews. My 15 year old son worked for a year to save up money to have his first car by the time he turned 16. So I uh, found this company, called the guy. Uh, yeah, no problem. We can have that fixed in a week. I'm going to need the money up front. So we gave him $4,000. Kev says that was three months ago and he still doesn't have the car. Kelvin Collins with the Better Business Bureau says the repair shop has not responded to any of their complaints. He says the Bureau has reported them to the Georgia Attorney General and Federal Trade Commission. Our reporter Kalisha Moore called the shop and visited in person, but no one responded to her request for an interview. Well, 637, I want you to check this out. Drone 13 has flown over so many Central Georgia scenes over the years, and now you can watch it all right in one place. We've compiled the best of our drone shoots, like picturesque scenes over Lake Juliet and Lake Sinclair, some serene shots like this one of historic churches across Central Georgia, and so much more. You can stream Drone 13 right now on the 13 WMAZ Plus app. Download it on Roku and Amazon Fire and enjoy views of your community from the skies whenever you would like. And it's almost time for those Friday night lights to shine. Teams are getting ready to hit the field for another week of gridiron greatness here in Central Georgia. Make sure you join us for Tailgate 13 at 5. Our crew will be live from Jones County as they get ready to take on the Warner Robins Demons. Of course, at 11.35 tonight, you can join our crew for football Friday night. They'll be bringing you highlights from games all across our area. Time is 6.38 and thankfully another great weekend for football Friday night. It was kind of dicey there at the start of the season. Exactly. I was just getting ready to say that. You remember like at the beginning, mm -hmm. the weather was a hot mess express, yes. but yeah. it's got its act together. It has, and we're hoping the weather will be able to get its act together down in Jacksonville. Yes. Yes. This weekend for Georgia, Florida, you're looking live down there. TIAA Banks Field down there on the river, St. John's River, that is, in Jacksonville. We'll take a look at the forecast for that here in just a moment. But first, back here in central Georgia, 50s and 60s on the board, 55 here in Macon, as well as in Warner Robins, 54 in Montezuma, 61 in Thomaston, 59 in Sparta and 59 in Swainsboro right now across the southeast. Mainly quiet 70 down there in Jacksonville. Once you get across the Texas state line here running into some rainfall, that's our next weather system beginning to take shape and that's going to lift up towards central Georgia here over the next few days. So partly cloudy skies out there right now, but as we roll into the afternoon, we'll see, we'll see some more breaks in the clouds before later on tonight. We see overcast skies begin to develop. Here we are about 4 p.m. Temperatures in the 70s across central Georgia, but then once we roll into the overnight hours, you can see those clouds there. There we are at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning and then tomorrow afternoon. It looks like we get some sort of a wedge set up in far northeastern Georgia, but that would clip, you know, Washington County, Hancock County, Baldwin County, uh, likely looking at overcast skies potentially as far west as Macon and Warner Robins tomorrow, but clear as you work your way down towards Taylor Macon County. It's also down towards, say, Crisp County and Wilcox County, and that'll be the general trend through at least the morning hours. Then into the evening, into the overnight, overcast skies for all of central Georgia on and off showers there Sunday morning. That's going to continue through Sunday afternoon as well. Overall, about a 40% chance of rain. 
and unfortunately it does look like it continues into Halloween. But the good news is it wraps up before trick or treating starts on Halloween. So here's a look at the GFS and the Euro into Halloween evening. Lifting the rain out of central Georgia should be mostly dry by the time we get into about the six, seven o'clock hour. We're going with partly cloudy skies and then into Tuesday quiet Wednesday, maybe a small rain chance up towards the north. It's looking like the recent runs of the GFS trying to show that. So as of now, I've got a 20% chance rain there on Tuesday. So for trick or treating, I'm going with 60s morning showers clearing out through the afternoon should be OK here in central Georgia for a great night of trick or treating as we roll into Monday night. All right, let's get a check of today's forecast 75 partly cloudy. We'll see those increasing clouds through the evening sunrise at 749 this morning continues to get later and later. In fact, I believe it was yesterday or the day before was the last day of 11 hours of daylight. We're now 10 hours and a few minutes of daylight uh, until the foreseeable future. Football Friday night tonight. We've got 70s down into the 60s sunset at 647. Here's your Georgia Florida forecast. If you're headed down to Jacksonville, temperatures in the 70s down there as well. Wouldn't surprise me to see one or two showers, but overcast skies and the hope is for gator tears there by about 7 p.m. Sunsets at 642 down there. And here's your weekend forecast back here in central Georgia. Any outdoor plans? It does look like Saturday's the better day than Sunday. A high of 71 on Saturday on Sunday. That'll be 73 with a 40% chance of rain. Your seven day into next week has 76 there on Halloween itself, mid to upper 70s for the remainder of the week with that small rain chance there on Wednesday.